without wasting time, it's my pleasure to invite to the pulpit Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Akwa Basibon State, and his dear wife, and his dignitaries, and his cabinet members are here. Tonight will be a great night. I invite the Executive Governor to the stage now. God bless you as you welcome him. Christians, praise the Lord. If you've been here, the one, the two, the three, the four, praise the Lord. So, so many people have been here. Only me. If you know you've not been here like me, after the one, praise the Lord. Uh, we are many. <laughs> praise the Lord. I, I have a very rare privilege right now given to us by the general superintendent of this great ministry, great commission, that I should stand in the gap for the country. We want to pray for Nigeria. We want to pray for Kwaibom. A lot of people make mistakes. When they say pray for the country, we think the country is the root, is the tree. You are the country. When they say pray for the state, you are praying for yourself. Quickly, those who are in the control, give me Isaiah 54, verse 10. Isaiah 54, verse 10. Isaiah 54, verse 10. We just want to take very short prayer points. I'm given only 10 minutes to do this. I want to stand in the gap for Nigeria. I want to read Isaiah 54 verse 10. The Bible says, For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, said the Lord that had mercy on thee. If you go to the New Living Translation of the Bible, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 7, I'll read quickly. The Bible says, and work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you into. Pray to the Lord for it, for its welfare will determine your own welfare. Brethren, this night, I want to stand in the gap for peace in Nigeria. I want to pray for the peace in this state. If you listen to when I read Isaiah 54 verse 10, there's what we call covenant of peace. We want to invoke that covenant of peace. He said, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. Said the Lord that had mercy on thee. What will make the difference is the mercy of God upon us as a country. Is the mercy upon us as a state. Wherever you are right now, can we lift up prayers to God? Say, Father, have mercy. We invoke your covenant of peace. Peace upon this country. I don't know whether it does not disturb you that we can no longer move freely as citizens of this country. You cannot move from one region to another. We want to say, Father, have mercy. Have mercy on us as a people. Have mercy upon this country. Show us mercy. We invoke the covenant of that peace upon this country. We invoke the covenant of peace. Let there be peace in Nigeria. Let there be peace in Akwaibom State. Let there be peace in your family. Let there be peace in your home. Let there be peace in your life. Pray for peace of the Lord. The Bible says that it is said by the Lord that had mercy on thee, that the covenant of his peace shall not be removed. Tell God to multiply the peace in the land of Akwaba Sibom State. Let there be peace in this land. Let there be peace in Akwaba Sibom State. The Bible says when you pray for the welfare, will determine your own welfare. The peace of the land will determine the peace in your life, will determine the peace in your family, will determine the peace in your business, will determine the peace you enjoy, will determine the peace in your movement, will determine the peace as you sleep, as you move around, in everything that you do. God is not the man that should lie. He said for the peace and prosperity of this city, says the Lord, 
for its welfare will determine your welfare as an individual. Say, Father, let there be peace. Invoke the covenant of peace. Invoke the covenant of peace of God upon Nigeria, all the 36 states of this country, all the 774 local government areas of Nigeria. Pray for the peace of the Lord in Akwabasibom state, in all the 31 local government areas of this state. Let the covenant of peace of the Lord not be removed. Father, give us peace as a people. Give us peace as a nation. Give us Let your mercy be upon us that you give us peace. And we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can I hear your amen? Can I hear your amen? Brethren, we want to take our second prayer point. I want to show you one thing about life that a lot of people don't know. In Psalm 7 verse 9. Psalm 7 verse 9. The Bible says, Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. But establish the just. For the righteous God tried the hearts and rents. It is only when the righteousness of the, rich, of the wicked, it is only when the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. That's the only time the righteous can be established. So for the righteous to be established, for that promise God made you to be fulfilled, for that prophecy to be fulfilled in your life, for that thing to come to pass, for that dreams to come to pass, you want to say, God, this is personal. This is also for the state. You want to say, Father, oh Lord, can we say together, oh Lord, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end in Nigeria, in Aquaibom State, in my family, in my life, over my children, over my husband, over my wife, shall you begin to pray. Tell God, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end so that you can establish me. That's the only time, the fulfillment of his promise. The Bible says, oh Lord, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. But establish the just. But establish the just. If that wickedness of that wicked has not come to an end, brethren, God is truth and forever. That's when you will be established. That's when you fulfill your purpose. That's when you realize your dream. That's when that promise God has made you will come to pass. Let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Over Nigeria, over Akwaibom State, over your family, over your life, over your children, over everything you do, over your business. Some of you are suffering a whole lot because of the wickedness of the wicked over your business, over your daily endeavor. Probably what you're going through today is just because the wicked continue to actually frustrate what you're doing. But tonight, by the wonders of the cross, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end and establish me. Tell God to establish you as the just. Tell God to establish me as the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Can I hear you? Amen. Can the Christians say amen? I join my faith with all our fathers in faith and say, oh Lord, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. But establish us the just in Jesus' mighty name. Finally, quickly, you want to declare. This one is your personal prayer. You want to declare for yourself, for your family, for your children. Let the Spirit of the Lord give you that conviction that you pray. Malachi 3, 17. We've been praying this prayer throughout. The Spirit is leading us to be praying all the time. So, it's a very simple prayer. Malachi 3, 17. The Bible says, And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts. In that day, when I make up my jewels, I will spare them. As a man spared his own son that severed him. Brethren, so many things are going round. People are dying every day. All kinds of sicknesses. 
Now, they are coming out in the world. They say fourth uh, wave of COVID-19 is called Omicron. They are looking for all kinds of names. Satan is as if he's walking naked right now on the surface of the earth. Things are coming to an end. But you want to just pray a simple prayer and invoke the heavens upon your life, upon a quiet bomb state. You want to say a simple prayer, Lord, spare me. Lord, spare us. Because the Bible says, God says, and I will spare them. You want to say, Father, spare me. Spare my family. Spare my children. Spare us against all calamities, against all evil occurrence, against all adversaries, against all evil happenings. Even as this COVID fourth realm or whatever name they are calling, Father, spare me. Why bomb state? Spare my life. Spare my health. Spare my business. Spare my family. Spare my children. Spare us, O oh Lord. Cry unto God. Let the heavens hear you tonight. Say, Lord, spare me. Spare me. Spare me. Spare me. The Bible says, and God has already made a promise. It's for you to walk in it tonight. Let by the wonders of the cross, by the wonders of the cross, by the finished work of Jesus Christ, he said, it is finished. Say, by the wonders of that cross, Father, spare me, spare my state, spare my nation, spare our people, spare me, O oh God, spare my people, spare me, spare me. In this last month of the year, Lord, spare my life. Spare my life. There shall be no loss of life in our state any longer. In everything, in your church, wherever you are, Lord, spare me. Tell God to spare me. To hear you tonight. Tell him to spare you. He has made a promise. If a mortal man, how much more, God Almighty? God has made a promise to spare our lives. It is your duty to ask the heavens to spare you. Tell God to spare you, and God will spare your life, will spare your health, will spare your family, will spare your children. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Our own part. Do your part. Do your part. By the wonders of the cross. By the finished work on the cross of Calvary, perform a wonder in our lives. One of us, against every calamity, against every problems, against all adversaries, against evil. May you spare all of us. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, shall we be seated. Put your hand together for Jesus.